Hi everyone, in this video we'll see how to do Jira to service line integration. In the use case is we will create an issue in Jira and see if it creates incident in ServiceNav. So the first step is to do a setup on ServiceNav side. So the, to do that we will create a processor record in ServiceNav. Now the processor table is not uh, accessible for us to create records. So if you say if you go to processors, system definition processors, there is no new option which means you cannot create it from here. So we have to do a little bit of work around using a background script. So go to background scripts and then copy this here. I call it as Jira integration. Jira service now integration and then click on run. So this will create the processor uh, record. We'll just quickly check it. Now we have to make changes to this record, right? Change the type to script, give the role as public. And then add parameters to it. So for now we just need these four parameters. We can add more if needed or we can add additional parameters as needed. The path is then the path of the, uh, the name of the page that will be invoked uh, from webhook from Jira webhook. So let's give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it as Jira service now endpoint. And then I want to save it. Uh, the next step is to update the script. So I'm just going to copy all of this and then drop it here. So essentially what the script is doing is it is constructing a variable called a slog based on the parameters which are being sent uh, to ServiceNav and then it is printing the log. Uh, and then it is also sending a response back saying that the status is 200 so that the source system will know that uh, there is a successful uh, uh, response from service now so next step we have done the processor creation next step is to create a public page to do that we'll go to a table called sys underscore public uh, we'll copy this name so we can use it uh, and then click on new just give this name here and submit it so once we created a public page, uh, we are good to go, right? So we have the processor script, we have the public page, the two steps are done. Next is to access the page. So this is the URL to access it. Uh, the URL has the instance name, the endpoint name, uh, the page name, and then the operations which we are using to, uh, basically the parameters which we have created. Let's right? so just copy all of this and then invoke it. Uh, so we want to invoke it in a in private session so that it doesn't ask for credentials to access the page so once you uh, invoke the url uh, you'll not see anything coming up on the in the browser but uh, in the log you can verify if the invocation is successful or not so let's go here and then let's do uh, let's open a new tab and then open it here so you can check in the log uh, just go to the logs and you can see that uh, this is the uh, information that is being sent as part of the page invocation so you can see that the name of the user is jira admin jira admin and then issue create is the parameter we have sent and then the the uh, value that is being sent for jira issue id is issue one and project id is project one so this proves that the endpoint is accessible and it is accessible without authentication so the next step is to do a setup on jira side to do that we will create a webhook on jira uh, So let's quickly navigate to Jira. Okay, so on Jira side, you have to create a webhook. To do that, you click on this here and then 
on the get icon and then go to system so on the system you can search for with a keyword called webhook and then it creates a webhook and then you can look up for webhooks so now here we already have one created we'll create a new one right we'll just copy all of it we'll just change the name of the page so we can give a name to this webhook we can call it a service now jira I'll just say Jira issue create service now, right? And we'll call it as that. And I'll give this as a name, uh, as a URL. Uh, we want to change this, so let's quickly change the page name. So let's do that. So let's change that to that. The rest of it is okay, right? Uh, so after this step, we will also change this to variables. Uh, so, but first we'll invoke it without that, and then after that we'll improve this URL so we can uh, dynamically pass the variables from Jira to service now. And once we add the URL, the next step is to define the trigger conditions. So think of it as a business rule uh, where you can define when the business rule has to trigger in service now so this is kind of similar so we have all these options like issue related events uh, and then you have user related events jira configuration related events and so on so we'll focus on issue for now we will select issue is created and updated so these two uh, operations will select uh, we'll just do created for now and then we can have a different uh, because we are sending the operation as issue create so we'll do issue create only for now right and then we will click on the create uh, button so that it creates a webhook the next step is to test the webhook uh, so we will do that so we will click on create and we will create a issue right the issue type is story test service now and then we will create it and when we come to service now again we check the logs you see that the issue has been sent from Jira to ServiceNow and this is the information which was sent so you can see that the Jira header is saying as Atlassian webhook is to be declined so this proves that the information has reached ServiceNow now we want to process this so that it actually can be used to create an incident and so on right that's the next step so we'll watch that in the next video so this video is just to show that we can create a webhook in Jira with a setup in ServiceNow and that can be handled in ServiceNow